Now we're nearing the end of this course on KDB architecture. So thanks for sticking with me if you have. And I've only really scratched the surface in these modules. And I wanted to use this video to point out other resources and where I'd recommend you go next. So a few things I deliberately didn't cover are because they're already in our developer level three academy course. So the first one being modifying our database. So if we wanted to modify a table we already saved down, and if we needed to do that on our historical database, we would need some special functions in order to do that. And this is covered in detail in the partition module on the Academy. It's typically done with a variation of the dbmain.q script, which is available on the public GitHub. And this provides really useful utilities for editing and maintaining a historical database. And generally these functions are safer and should be used in place of just raw commands when you're doing database amendments. And the end of the course capstone on the Academy project even has exercises where you can run yourself on the sandbox, practicing using Dibby Mint on a real database. Um, so would recommend checking that out. Secondly, I wanted to mention compression, which is covered in that same partition database module. And KDB can compress data as it's written to disk and it's used to reduce storage requirements on disk. Now there is a trade-off um, with query performance when you use compression, but it's typically a trade-off that developers are willing to make as KDB is still ultra fast. And again, you can try out the exercises around compression in that module. Lastly, I just wanted to collate all the white papers I've mentioned throughout this course in one place because I've mentioned quite a lot throughout. We have a one on building real-time tick subscribers, which has more real-time subscription calculations than we had time to cover here. And if you'd like to see some more of them done in a video, you can let me know. We have common design principles for KDB gateways, data recovery for ticker plants, which dives into ticker plant log files in more detail than we covered and shows you how to recover data in different scenarios. There's also a white paper on disaster recovery planning discussing how you can maintain high availability of your application. I just want to remind you now, these white papers are when you want to build your entire KDB architecture from scratch. But a lot of this functionality comes already built into the product for you in products like the KX platform products, refinery and sensors, as well as our cloud native product, KDB Insights. So if you don't want to have to build your own system and get, manage your gateways and do all of those things, you don't have to. But all the core concepts you have learned in this course are baked into those off the shelf products. So by taking this course, no matter what KDB product you end up choosing, it will have relevancy and you can apply it there. That's it for this module. I'll see you in the next video, which will be the last one.